everybody, welcome back to Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by, welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you do choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Yep, I'm bringing to you another crafting from my stash DIY using these wood plaques that are very old from last summer at the Dollar Tree. Yes, this is half of a plaque. Actually, it's like three fourths of a plaque. I don't remember what I used the bottom half of this plaque for, but I saved it because it was still a good size plaque and I never got around to using it again in another DIY until today. Today's DIY is not only using this plaque, but again, it is using my Cricut because I have limited access to items. And so since I have my Cricut and I have so much vinyl, I have so much cardstock, I figured it was a good alternative to bring you these DIYs and to actually show you all the fun things that you can do with your Cricut. For those of you who have a Cricut, who haven't pulled it out of the box, or for those of you who have one and really just don't use it all that much because you don't know what it does. And for those of you who are thinking about getting a Cricut but you're just on the fence about it, some of the DIYs that I'm bringing to you while we're all hunkered down at home are using the Cricut because like I said, I can't really get out of the house to go buy stickers or alternative items that I would typically do or use to bring you these DIYs. And so since I've got my Cricut and I've got a ton of vinyl and cardstock, like I said, it's a great way to show you what it can do. I can't wait to show you today's cute wall decor piece using this wall decor plaque from the Dollar Tree and my Cricut. So let's not waste any more time. I think that this DIY is so fitting for what's going on right now. Okay, I'm gonna quit my gabbin. Let's get to crafting on a budget. Crafting from my stash. Alrighty, so getting started, I decided to change up the plaques and go with this plaque instead. This too is an older plaque from the Dollar Tree. I believe it was from last summer. The size and the shape are just gonna end up working better for me. And so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the shell embellishment, but I'm not gonna worry about covering up the decorative side of this plaque. I'm gonna flip it over and using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of ivory, I'm gonna give this a good couple coats of this paint. Because I had to water down my chalk paint because I was running low, it took me a total of three coats to cover this plaque. Now I'm gonna take this leftover black and white and gray gingham scrapbooking paper that I had left over from an Easter plaque DIY that I just recently did. And using some Mod Podge, I'm gonna place just a bit of Mod Podge along the outside edges of this plaque because I'm going to place these strips down along the sides, just kind of framing it in. Now, when I place these strips down, don't be worried when you see that they're not completely lined up with the edges of the plaque in some of the areas. I really just kind of wanted to make sure that the pattern lined up well. And because I'm going to be framing this plaque out anyway, it's not gonna show. And so just really try to get your patterns to line up the best that you can if you're doing this with me, if you have the items to do it and you should be good to go. And I'm gonna put these strips on all four sides. And this time I am not going to mess up the pattern. It is all gonna be the white and black on the inside and the black and gray on the outside. When I did my Easter one, I totally goofed and didn't realize that I had flip-flopped one of the strips and so the pattern was completely off. And I tell you, I didn't see it until I was editing the video and I was like, oh my word. But I can promise you that I ended up taking it apart and fixing it because I couldn't handle looking at it once I saw it. I couldn't unsee it. Like I said earlier, for this DIY, I will be using my Cricut because I don't have the capability of going out and getting some stickers and I don't have a lot of stickers on hand right now. What I do have, I'm kind of keeping for some upcoming DIYs that I wanna do using my stash. And so for this DIY, since I have a ton of vinyl 
on hand in my stash. I thought that this would work out better, it would be easier, and yeah, I could get the job done. Now, if you don't have vinyl but you have cardstock, you could very easily do this using cardstock. Go ahead and just cut it out and you're gonna need to use a spray adhesive on the back side of your letters or your saying. I went into Cricut Craft Room, I designed all the wording with the fonts that I liked and just kind of got creative in there. It's such a fun, easy to use craft room when you're using your Cricut. It really isn't hard at all, so don't be intimidated by it and using it because it really is easy. If you all want to see more Cricut DIYs and like how-to videos in Cricut Craft Room, I totally can show you them by recording my screen and teaching you how to use it. I tell you, if you've got a Cricut, you got to pull it out and use it because you're going to love it. And so today I'm using just a basic black vinyl. This is one that I picked up on Amazon because I use black so much. I usually get black, white, and uh, the transfer paper on Amazon because you can get a huge roll of it for like $12 or $15. And so to me, it's just a lot less expensive to do it that way versus to go to a craft store and buy it because you're not gonna get a roll as big as you are when you go on Amazon for the price that you're gonna pay. And so right now you can see that I am doing what they call weeding it, which is taking off the excess vinyl. Then once you've got all of that extra vinyl removed, you're gonna wanna go back and remove all those little pieces that are in each of the letters. Then I'm gonna take my transfer paper. This roll is about halfway gone and I've had it for about two years, so it was worth the buy, worth the money. I'm gonna cut a piece that's gonna fit what I've cut out with my vinyl. Once I've done that, you're gonna go ahead and remove the paper off the back of the transfer, just leaving the clear sticky sheet and you're lightly going to place it over the top of your vinyl lettering, wording, or saying in my case. Then just gonna take some kind of a scraper. I picked up this scraper from the Dollar Tree in the kitchen section. This works amazing, it's big. It is a little on the sharp side, so you wanna keep it out of the hands of little ones, but when working with your Cricut and vinyl, it works perfect for this. If not, a credit card will do and that was what I used until I found this scraper and you're just gonna kinda go over all of the letters because you want the top of these letters to stick to the back of the transfer paper because then we're gonna go ahead and peel the transfer paper up off the white backing that the black vinyl lettering is stuck to and it should come right up onto the transfer paper leaving you that whole back side that's gonna be sticky. I also decided to add just a yellow lemon since I had yellow vinyl and this again was an image that came free with my subscription in Cricut Craft Room. I think I pay $10 a month and it gives me unlimited access to thousands of fonts and images and projects. It's really great. And so I thought that this would be a cute addition. I was really glad that I had the yellow. I didn't think that I did. And when I looked, I was surprised that I did. It was one that hadn't been used yet. So now I'm gonna take the vinyl lettering and I kind of laid it out upside down originally just to get an idea of where I wanted all my wording and lettering to go. Once I've got it in place, I'm just gonna rub it on. I'm gonna take a scraper again and go over the top of the transfer paper just so the letters adhere onto the plaque. And this step is pretty easy. They usually stick a lot easier than removing, I would say, uh, the excess vinyl when you're weeding it. And so yeah, I'm gonna do that to the top and the bottom here. And so you can see here just how easily the transfer paper pulls up. You do want to be careful if a letter comes along with it, just go ahead and take your scraper and give it a bit more of a rub. Before I add the center wording, I wanted to add the lemon in the center and I thought that the yellow lemon was just such a fun pop of color with all of the black and white going on or black, yeah, black, white and cream, I guess, going on with this piece. And so once I put the lemon down, I'm gonna go ahead and add the last of my black lettering that says sweeten. And I thought that this would be perfect right over the top of the lemon.
I was sitting on the couch with my computer in Cricut Craft Room and I really just wanted to get creative with using different fonts for this saying and I just thought that this saying was perfect and suiting for what's going on in life and in the world right now. Trying to keep a positive attitude and so I like to look at sayings like this because it just reminds me that even though times are tough right now, there's still a ton that I have to be grateful for. Now taking some of Aileen's Tacky Glue, because I have a bunch of Dollar Tree's Jenga blocks on hand, I thought that it would be really cute to line the outside of this plaque with the Jenga blocks. Now when I place these blocks, I'm not gonna place them solidly on the plaque itself. You'll see here that I did it just on the edge. And that's because I wanted to make sure that when I place these blocks that I placed them in a way that would give me a size where I didn't need to worry too much about cutting the blocks, that I could use the blocks in their entirety. I will tell you though that I did need to cut one block in the bottom corner because I just couldn't make it work and that was the problem with the other plaque was when I tried to use the other plaque and frame it with the blocks, I ended up needing to cut several blocks and I just thought that it was way too much work and so when I saw that I had this plaque in my stash I pulled it out lined up the blocks and it almost worked out perfectly I only needed to cut one of the blocks now to cut these you're gonna need to use a saw of some sort or you're just gonna need to use a bigger plaque and cut it down to size to a size where the blocks fit evenly and perfectly and since I only have limited plaques on hand and I do have the means of cutting these blocks, I just cut the one block. If I'm being honest, I do like the color of the raw wood framing this plaque, but I don't like it as much as the end result after I painted it. So if you want to be done with this plaque and you framed it out with the Jenga blocks and you like the raw wood, cool, you are done. You just need to stay tuned to the end and worry about the hanger on the back side. I decided that since I want it to match my decor, I'm gonna go ahead and use some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of hazelnut, and I'm gonna give it a quick single coat. I'm not gonna do multiple coats because I really don't mind if the natural wood comes through or not, and it is gonna be a bit time consuming to paint it because the blocks are already attached to the plaque, so you need to be a bit careful when you're going along that inside edge where the paper is. But you know what? I've got nothing but time on my hands. I have nowhere to go, so I don't mind doing kind of a tedious project like this where I gotta really be careful about putting the paint on and I can't just slop it on. I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Ivory and just kinda dry brush some of it on. I'm not gonna put a solid coat. Just dry brush it on. If it looks a little harsh, don't worry about it because once it's dry, I'm gonna take some sandpaper and I'm gonna go over that ivory, go over the hazelnut, distress it a bit, soften up that ivory, and uh, bring in some of that natural wood that's under the hazelnut. Then I'm gonna take just an ink pad. This is a black ink pad. I think I might have got this at uh, I don't know, maybe Joann's, Hobby Lobby, or Michael's. Again, it's one I had in my stash. And using a paintbrush, I'm going to go and just darken up some of this frame just a bit. If you darken it up too much in some spots, just go back over it with your sandpaper and lighten it up. And it's an easy fix. And there you have it. I will tell you that I did take my ink and paintbrush and go over the center just to kind of dirty it up and distress it a bit. On the back side, we got to cover up the previous design or existing design. And to do that, I'm going to take some Mod Podge, give the back of this a nice good coating, and taking a piece of this wood scrapbooking paper that I had on hand that I picked up from Hobby Lobby, I'm going to use this to cover it up. Now, if you have a roll of that craft paper from the Dollar Tree, that would work perfect. I don't have any on hand right now because the last time I did have it, Allie decided to use it as a sword and so she had a lot of fun with it and yeah, so I don't have it anymore. So scrapbooking paper is going to work perfect for this. And to hang this plaque up, I'm going to use my go-to method of using some twine, tying the two ends together with a knot and just putting a generous amount of glue onto it, adhering it onto the back of the plaque. 
stamp it with my handmade with love stamp that I found at Michael's in their dollar bins, sign and date it. Did I not tell you that it was so suiting? I feel like when I see sayings like that, it really just reminds me that it's temporary. I have so much to be thankful and grateful for. And so really it makes me not want to dwell on what's going on, not think about what's going on, but just to stay positive and know that this is temporary and this too shall pass in time. I hope you all enjoyed today's wall decor DIY using my Cricut and Dollar Tree's wall decor plaque. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day, happy crafting on a budget, and bye for now everybody.